Hello, I'm Joshua Skelton, and uh, this PowerPoint presentation was the one that I gave at the IGD Atlanta um, uh, chapter meeting on August 28, 2012. Here is uh, two of my, the best ways to get in touch with me through my email, my Gmail account, and my SPSU account. That's joshskelton30 at gmail.com and then jskelto2 at spsu.edu. And below that is my uh, website um, where you can find more information about me, other research, and other projects that I've worked on. And you can also see my resume there as well. So, all right, let's get to it. So, this presentation is mainly about you know the, the research that I did at, at the uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, or UTC. They had a grant funded by the National Science Foundation where in, in, in my project, there were 10 different projects. My project personally was to find a way to uh, capture data from the Connect and use this to facilitate at home stroke uh, rehabilitation. So when I found out this news and I went and told my family and friends, you know, that, and I've been working in IT for over seven years, and so I felt this way for a while, but for this particular, I felt like this is how my family saw me, as Bill Gates. <laughs> as soon as I told them I was going to be trying to figure out a way to do this using the Microsoft Connect SDK, they were like, oh, Bill, you're the next Bill Gates. And, and these are people that you know, know nothing about computing, and so it's really funny to get that comparison. But you know, I felt like this. You know, This is how I saw myself, the uh, very philosophical, the thinker. I'm going to help solve humanity's problems, you know, and a very... Uh, <laughs> Very, um, I just felt very important, um, which you know can also make me uh, sound very uh, pretentious as well. But, <laughs> but, but, but at any rate, this you know, part of me did feel this way. But in reality, this is how I felt at times. You know, working with a new SDK API. Uh, at a new place, you know, being away from home. Uh, I did feel like this at times, uh, trying, just trying to get it to do what I wanted it to do, and I think most of us have probably felt this way at one time or another. And here begins the official part of my presentation. So, uh, I initially gave this, uh, this presentation uh, uh, earlier in the summer. You see the date here earlier in the summer, or, or late in the summer earlier in the year and the main part of my research was to find a way to uh, utilize the Xbox Connect to facilitate in-home stroke rehabilitation. Now in, in going to this uh, there were um, there was one main goal and then a couple of subset of goals that, that I wanted to accomplish. Uh, the main thing I wanted to do was to develop uh, a Xbox Connect system so the patients can use it for their in-home physical rehabilitation and or physical therapy. You know, let's not stop at stroke uh, therapy here, you know. In conducting this research, uh, I focused on main two sub-goals of the main goal, right? So the first thing was obviously to, to capture data. I wanted to capture whatever the Connect would give me and, um, and, and figure out, you know, just learning about the Connect SDK, what can I pull from it? What can I do to that would be an advantage? You know, use it as an advantage to to measure movement for therapy reasons. And then I would want to further take this data and manipulate it um, for measurement, some type of measurement for stroke patient rehabilitation. Now, for anybody that's listening to this and they're not familiar with the Connect or the hardware of the Connect, I was going to do a little brief overview. So. Um, the Connect has, um, it, it, if you can look at the picture here at the top right, um, has three depth sensors, which are infrared sensors. Works much like a ping device, in that it, it sends out and um, it sends out a, a laser across the room, around the room, in front of it, and then it receives this information back as sort of a ping, and, and, and that's what the one's recording that and one's sending out an infrared signal. That's why you have two of the little sensors there. Uh, you also have an RGB camera, much like just a basic web webcam, um, that can record and it can also take pictures. It can it can record um, video uh, as long as you program it to do what you want it to do. And then it also has a motorized tilt.
So this thing can go up or down. They don't really like you going negative 20 or positive 20. If you try to continually go past that, it will break. Um, also, moving it without programming it is bad too. Um, but basically, it will. Um, you know, you can use you can program it to move up or down uh, every so often. And just on just on the y-axis, up and down the y-axis. There's no side-to-side -side movement. And then it has multi-array mic. Uh, it has a left and a right mic. And you know you can also program the Connect to listen to voice commands and to do certain things and to pick pick certain things on the screen for you. For example, out of the box, if you plug this into your computer and you download the SDK and, and the other uh, uh, the other files that it contains, you can start you can figure your your Windows 7 for instance and you can uh, manipulate things on the screen you can open up files you can open up your start menu all by voice command which is I think very cool and you can also record by voice which I think is very very cool so in-home therapy you know it it is achievable using this technology from the research I found and what I've done th th this is and not just stroke uh, therapy but I feel that physical therapy in general will can benefit from the use of a connect at home. You know, so in, in using this connect, you know, upon successful uh, capture of, of data and the exercises, doctors could potentially that they could review this data uh, almost instantaneous from the comfort of their office, their home office, uh, on the road. Uh, it, it would be available to them. Um, not only you know the ratings that we give them, but also the video that we can record them doing the exercise. Um, so upon that, they can review these treat the data, and they can also look at the treatment results. You know, is the treatment doing what it's supposed to? Do they need to come in for a visit? Uh, if they're on the right path, let them know. And then they can suggest further treatment plans based on the data they're receiving from this at-home system. Now, of course, like any other project or, or what have you, th there are motivations, and, and, and in this research is no different. Uh, there are major motivations into, into having at-home therapy uh, for patients. Uh, the main one, you know, lowering the cost for the patient. You know, health care is, uh, it is, it is a very, very high rate right now. And uh, I read a paper based on a research from Sweden uh, at a hospital there, and they were showing how much it was, even if they sent their patient home with a care physician, that it reduced their bill uh, more than $8,000, which is a lot of money, especially for, uh, well, it wasn't dollars, but uh, but American currency, it was, you know, about $8,000. And if you think, uh, you know, about that, it's a tremendous difference, so why couldn't we do the same here? You know, we wouldn't be paying a lot of other labor and fees if we could do a lot of stuff at home and track our progress from home. This would also save time for the patient and very, very well the doctor as well. Uh, you know, if, if we don't have to book the appointment, have somebody drive us, go there, wait, you know, that's a lot of time. We could do a lot of the stuff at home and the doctors could see not only, you know, they wouldn't have to spend their time physically seeing a patient, they could be worrying about other uh, matters or other patients that are maybe, could be at times more severe. So this will save time, which goes kind of hand in hand and will save money. And the doctor can actually, they could probably make more money if they, if they actually could see more patients this way. Um, this also can reduce uh, the discomfort of the patient. I mean, think about, you know, if I'm healing, I would rather be in the comfort of my home than in a hospital, a very strange place, um, or some kind of clinic. You know, if I could do a lot from home, um, I would be a happier patient, and I do believe that happiness can coincide with with healthiness. So this would definitely make a healthier patient, I would think. And this also will fuel the advancement of, of similar technology. You know, the hardware for the Connect, this can help get researchers to, you know, if not at Microsoft, make a new Connect that's better, which they're already working on, or even other companies to make a, uh, a, a product that's very cost effective and can do some of the same things that the Connect could do. So, and not only just hardware, but also software and programmers and, and computer science, you know, fuel this so we can make better programs that can take use of, of this technology, you know, this hardware. So, I'll start with the related work. In doing this research, um, 
uh, I based uh, me going using the uh, Microsoft SDK off of a paper out of Notre Dame, and in, in, in what Notre Dame did when when, uh, when the students in Notre Dame um, researched this, they researched it. Um, they wanted to see if what was available. You know, they wanted to use the Connect for rehabilitation purposes, and they wanted to see what was available at the time as far as you know, you know program environments, you know, SDKs, and, and what was available for them to tap into. Um, two of the main ones they really looked at was OpenNI and the Microsoft Connect SDK. And they ultimately went with the Microsoft Connect SDK uh, for, for various reasons, um, and which I'll talk about in a second. But, you know, basically they were, they were looking, uh, the, the main focuses of why they, of, of why they, or the main reasons why they used this was, you know, they, they focused mainly uh, on measuring between OpenNI and Microsoft SDK. They, they, they used the accuracy of the skeletal data which they found with the Microsoft SDK to be a little better. They looked at ease of use of each SDK. They also looked at the frame rate speed, and they also looked at the results of these three variables under different testing conditions. And they ultimately came out and said the Microsoft SDK is the best for what we're trying to do, especially for tracking movement with therapy. It was a little more accurate and had a better frame rate speed. And it was also pretty easy to use. Um, so, a question that kind of arose from this is that they kind of left, and that we're going to try and answer is: it could a similar system be used in the future for uh, rehabilitation purposes? And here is a, a sample screenshot from 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 their program. Uh, you can see the depth data at the top. You can also see the skeleton data on the top top right. And you can see it, it track. You can see the twenty points are what they call joints that it tracks, which is basically um, a vector in space. It has x, y, and z position out in space. And you can see they track the frames per second. They um, they, they they had a way that you can calibrate it, uh, and they showed the other other positions in space as well. Also looked at uh, Clemson University students there uh, did some uh, research and. Actually made it a, uh, a virtual uh, game environment almost. Um, th th they also wanted to show that you could use the Connect for rehabilitation. So that what they did is they they made a virtual game uh, environment, and they were focused on motivation. That they were saying, well, if we can give uh, the user some type of motivation, they will want to move and do some of these rehabilitation exercises. So they developed a game where the user would use their left arm, and as they move their left arm in in real in real space. Uh, this virtual arm in 3D space on the screen was moving th that arm, there was a virtual arm on the screen that would move just as you were moving your real arm. So they used this arm to interact with objects on the screen and show that this would be some type of motivation to reach up and move these objects. Here's a screenshot of what they did, or a sample screenshot, you can see, what, you can see kind of what it looked like. But, th but they, they argued that this would, you know, having something to manipulate would give them motivation and just we could develop or we could make the exercises do certain things like this. Also, there was some a really interesting work. Uh, didn't really do with the Connect, but it, all, but it did with, uh, with movement and tracking movement. And this was at the Arizona State University. And what they developed, they developed this mixed, what they called a mixed reality rehabilitation uh, for stroke victims. And what this system did is it would track uh, audio and visual cues, or, 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 or they would actually use these cues and track the data and the movement from the user based on these that types of cues. So they, what they did is they had this huge table that they laid out in front, and uh, the screen was at one end of the table, head of the table, and the foot of the table or head of the table would be the uh, the user, and they were hooked up to all these devices. They had sensors on their hands, their arms, on their head, they had this helmet on, you know, that tracked, it tracked uh, position, or, or waves. And they also, um, they also used um, uh, motion sensor cameras that were, the, the really expensive ones, the nice ones that were tracked all around the user. And, and, and then they also had the screen that would give the cues, and they had a think like a joystick on the table and it was connected to sensors and so when they got different cues they would sometimes reach up and they would grab the the, the, the stick. The stick didn't move but they would grab it and they would grasp it. 
and it would measure it would, it would measure how fast they were getting there, how tight they were grasping it. So they used all this motion capture and, and sensing technology to to facilitate this. And you know what they did is they developed what they called a KIM, which is the kinematic impairment measure. And what it does what it did is it, it maps individual movement uh, to a numeric value, so they can later use this value to measure. And which they're using biofeedback and computational physiology, which we'll, I'll get to in a second. But uh, basically, this was allowed them to measure uh, movement, basically, just to, to measure any type of movement that happened during the uh, and, and put a numeric value on it. Uh, they found this significantly improved performance of, of reaching and, and grasping exercises that stroke survivors often have to have to um, have to do as part as part of their therapy. And here's a picture. Now, this isn't the main one that I was talking earlier, but this is uh, this is the same system, but this is what they were developing uh, for at, at home device. Now, right right now, it only has a couple of the or three of the the motion uh, cameras, and it's got the screen up front. Uh, the joystick is missing right now, um, and you don't see any other equipment they were used to hook up to. So, but this is the start. I couldn't get the other picture to to work properly, so I found this one that they're working on right now, which. Kind of gives you an idea of where they would sit and what they would see. Now, I mentioned biofeedback and computational physiology earlier, um, and chances are uh, you've used biofeedback at least once in your life, if not more. I mean, anytime you ever take your weight measurement um, on, on a scale, you're using that to determine, you know, if you're going to exercise more or not, or if you're just curious, you're using that. That's called biofeedback. You're using that. Also, um, if you ever take your temperature, you know, that's also biofeedback. But basically, it's it's the treatment technique in which people are trained to improve their health by using signals from their own bodies. So if you took your temperature, it was off. You use that signal to either take some medication or go see a doctor. And so what's interesting is that computational physiology is basically the it's where you get take this data. You know any any biofeedback you got, and you develop a mathematical model uh, and or a computer model to describe the functions, these biological functions that you're finding. So these two ideas are, are I think, go hand in hand, especially when talking about measuring um, any type of movement to facilitate uh, rehabilitation, especially at home rehabilitation. You, we're going to have to put this in some kind of model or or something so the person can see, right? So when I first started this, and here on the right you can see, this is where um, you can see the joints. Sorry, it's pixelated, but you can see um, the 20 joints that the connect can track and, uh, on the body and what they're called. Um, so when I first started this research, I first proposed, and yeah, I think the pros on my website is probably the old proposal, the original proposal, but I only had nine weeks. Well, I only had seven weeks actually developed. First week was dedicated to doing research and attending some classes, and the last week was actually writing the paper and showing conclusions. So I really only had seven weeks to develop and test, and then produce. And um, so it was it was very time, uh, time a lot of time constraints, and it, it was it was pretty tough. So at first I wanted to capture, I wanted to say, okay, I want to capture whatever I can. I want to be able to uh, upload whatever I can to a, to an offsite space. And then I wanted to be able to um, store any of this stuff so that doctors can retrieve it later. And because of time constraints and problems, I was only able to really get the capturing down. So I amended my proposal. So really basically what I wanted to do is I, I was able to capture, uh, basically using the Kinect sensors to capture anything that I could capture, uh, any, any of the points or uh, whatever I needed to capture, you know, angles, for instance, uh, the skeletal positions, uh, record and track these. And and a lot of the way that I wanted to manipulate the data and record it was based on what the NIH scale needed for their motor exercises. And if you didn't, uh, this is from the National Institute of Health, but and I'll talk about it in a little bit too about what 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 we ran into with trying to um, use their scale. So in recording any information, I knew that every point was like a, a vector. It had X, a Y, and a Z in space. So knowing this, I knew that I wanted to record the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, for instance, you know, also you know the connect. In, in, in case you're wondering, it, it serves as the origin. 
It serves as the origin of the X, Y, and Z. So at the connect, as it's looking ahead, it's at zero. The Z, the Z position is zero. And the further depth you get away from, or distance you get away from the connect, the Z position gets greater and greater. So it's always a positive value. Now, the X and Y values are different. The connect's looking, basically looking at you. And every time you move anything on the right side of your body, as long as you're in the middle, as long as the <laughs> as long as the the uh, the planes run uh, in the center of you, but um, but if it's lined up correctly, the right side of your body will be negative x values, the left side will be positive x values, and the top part of your joints will be have a y values, and the bottom part will have negative y value. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're going to develop. Um, or, and you can also think of it as a screen being split up too in quadrants and so you have these negative and positive values as well. So what I did is I saved all the X, Y, and Z coordinates as a text file. Uh, it would loop and record this movement on each joint uh, 30 times a second it would record their position in space. And each line also had a timestamp so we could see the amount of time that had passed since the last time it, you know, it recorded. So as time progressed, we could make a chart. We could we could do a lot of things with this data to show movement. Actually, one of the members that were there, uh, he was researching how to visualize all the data that we were doing through our data mining, and he found that um, he was showing that uh, that he he could just basically take my X Y Z positions. They had they had a date timestamp. He could plug them into his own program and show some movement, and it was really nice to see. A, uh, um, a character that he had made move around with my X and Y Z coordinates. Um, we also, I also wanted to calculate the angle, uh, and this was based on the NIH, NIH scale, uh, stroke scale re uh, requirements. Uh, uh, we use when you're looking at the right arm or left arm moving, they want you to be your arm to go up at a 90 degree angle. So I know I wanted to, to measure some type of angle. We, we were measuring X, Y, and Z positions first, um, and I found that. You know, a lot of times the X, Y, and Z coordinates would be different for different people based on their size. So we had to figure out a way to have this be normalized for everybody or basically the same for everybody. So it was really hard to figure out in the time span they had to make all the X, Y, and Z positions uh, the same length uh, depending on the user. So we was like, well, let's, let's, let's measure their angle because everybody will have the same angle moving up. So, and, and these angles were exercise dependent because the right arm wanted a 90 degree and if you did your leg exercise and if you're laying down it wanted you to lift your leg to 30 degrees. So these were dependent on the exercise. I also wanted to record video of the exercise session. I found that a lot of these exercises in doing our research we found that a lot of doctors and nurses that were performing these exercises on the people and recording their movement in person, it, it was sometimes subjective. Sometimes they would barely move their arm and they would get scored something better than say I would score them. So I figured sometimes this was subjective and it really was under the discretion of a health professional. So uh, I, want, I wanted to record this this video so the doctors, if there was any discrepancy in the data they were getting or if they had any questions, they could always go and, and, and look at the exercise session to get a better score for themselves. So if, let's talk about implementation for a second. I used the uh, Microsoft um, Connect SDK with Visual Studio 2010. It's all in C sharp language. I use, also use the XNA framework because I am first and foremost a, a gamer, a game designer. So I wanted to use something that would uh, that would help help me use this as a game application. I also used uh, some framework from A4.net. Mainly their um, their AVI Writer class it was very interesting. It, it was a monster of a class, and I'm glad I found it because that would have been difficult <laughs> to do under the time frame. I, I'd never programmed in this kind of thing before, ever. And so this was all very, very new, and I'm fortunate for AForge.net um, to help me at the very end to be able to help record some type of AVI footage. So, more talking about implementation, I had to use, I wanted to use the NIH stroke scale as I said before, and we knew that the X, Y, and Z data was, wasn't that great for everybody. It couldn't be normalized across the board. It just it wasn't working. We even ran it through some tests. I had another student that was working on you know, 
algorithms that would take all of my data and run it through algorithms to see if we could score it and we just couldn't it was it was being the, the data was never clear for everybody with just doing the XYZ data and you could imagine the reasons why but so I wanted to measure that arm angle that they wanted after manipulation of math and, and the different joints and and um, and whatnot, we we ended up getting where it would be true to 90 degree angle. Um, basically, I fed function of three different uh, joints, and it would do the math and spit back out this angle for me. And because the scale wants you to do a 90 degree angle for at least 10 seconds, and if you waver in the 10 seconds, it will score you differently, and if you don't move, it scores you differently. So we had to measure this in order to give it a score. And pardon my. <laughs> My nice little drawing. I'm, 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 I'm a great artist. I don't know why I hire artists or even work with artists to, to program with me. I should just do it all. Uh, I'm kidding, of course. Um, but the uh, in going in further, you know, we had to modify this exercise. All right, I had to modify it um, because the stroke scale, the video that I saw, it, they would have you lift your arm straight into the air and then move it back straight out in front of you that is and we were finding that we had a line of sight issue the camera when when you put say your wrist joint in front of your elbow joint in front of your shoulder joint that it would have a hard time placing those joints in space without seeing all the joints so the X and Y and Z data would move it would jitter it would become it would be uh, the data would be horrible and therefore angle would be horrible because we're feeding it bad data so we modified the exercise to lift it to the side of the body instead of the front. The, the data we got was very, very, very smooth, much better. And, and this goes back to that line of sight issue. Because the connect sees right in front of it. Um, and if there's something in front of another object, that we're going to have a hard time seeing the second object. Um, I mean, think of the lunar eclipse or solar eclipse, and it's much the same way. Our line of sight gets gets out of whack of those objects. And just to show you, uh, this is from the, uh, the, right, uh, the right wrist. I think it's the right wrist. Maybe the left wrist, but it's from the arm. And what's happening is that, as we can see, the, the, X, um, the X and the Y data here uh, we can see a nice arc as they do the exercise from the right side of the body or from the side of the body. It goes up to a nice arc. It kind of levels off when they're holding it, the 90 degrees, and it comes down. You can see this over time. These are seconds at the bottom, and um, these are the positions on the left here. Now, with the Z coordinates, we can see that it it's it's very smooth because you, you're not moving forward or backward in space with the Z coordinate there. But when we pull the arm and we do the exercise and we, we, we pull it up straight in front of the body, we get a very different graph. Um, instead of the nice arc pattern that we were getting with the X and the Y, we're getting this jumbled up mess. And you know, in, in this, you may say, well, this looks like it works. But if you look, just like with the arc, when you're doing a steady movement up and down, it should still have a steady movement on both sides, a steady graph. And this doesn't. And and you can see that especially with the Z here, uh, this is it should have a nice a nice evenness to it. And this is from the jumbled up of the line of sight here. Uh, and looking at the angle, this is a, a look at the angle from um, m moving the arm up from the side of the body. And this was pretty much average for most users. And as we can see, it's a nice a nice arc there. Now, if we look at trying to take the same measurement of an angle from the front of the body, we get a mess. We get a mess. Now, with the leg, uh, we I had to modify this. You know, the NIH scale really wants you to hold, you know, lay, first of all, they want you to lay it on the ground. You know, with the previous exercises, they wanted you to be sitting down or laying down on a bed or on the floor. Um, but you know, but we decided to do the standing up one. With the leg, we had to have them lay down. Well, there's a problem with that, which we found. First, I thought, well, I can 
manipulate the connect and thinking that I'm standing up if I can take the connect and have it you know do the elevation I can put the connect higher up and I can program it to move with the motor uh, down so it has you in the frame and it thinks you're standing up it looks like you're standing up problem is there's no depth you have no depth the, the, the floor is so close to you that there's not enough different uh, different uh, a difference between you and the floor as far as the depth goes so it doesn't know where to place you in space so it can't see your skeleton basically so we tried standing up and I had some people help me hold a mattress tried that standing up with the mattress behind me still nothing if you're really close to a wall it won't pick you up so that was something we found out we um, so there was no way to actually lay down and do this exercise so you know I was about to stop there and then we decided to uh, just modify the exercise can we do something similar some kind of exercise with the leg and measure it and so that became our new focus was just to do something different so we ended up having you sit down and then lift the foot uh, lift the foot so that the entire leg is parallel to the floor so basically sit down and lift from your knee and have your foot and ankle go sh you know, straight up uh, with this we had difficulty because we had line of sight issues depending on who was using it if they could overextend their knee or just extend it enough they would have line of sight issue with their leg joints um, also I couldn't figure out three different joints to plug into my function to to measure an angle um, especially since they all jittered a lot when you sit down so what we decided to do or I decided to do was after you know banging my head on a whiteboard forever uh, which you can see some pictures of the whiteboard on the website if you go there um, uh, I decided well okay I knew these were you know we can see the connect here that the, the black circle represents the connect and and then you so you can see it's a point of origin you can see the X the, the X Y and Z axis and, and, and the planes that it that it throws out there and what I would do is I would you know well let's measure Let's measure the foot. I also did this for the foot and also did this for the ankle joint on different tests. And let's basically code up, depending on where their foot is, some points in space in front of them. And if it's on the right foot, you know, of course it would be over on one side of the plane. If it's the left foot, then these two points in front will be on the, the other side. So uh, what we did is we um or you know, I would I got the data from the from the from the uh, joint there connected to our, our, our body and then I would measure this angle and you can see where I kind of drew the angle another, again here's another drawing that I do <laughs> and uh, so when, as you moved your foot up as we'll see the angle would increase as we can see here so this was a way to measure some type of movement at least um, but again the problem was line of sight um, as, as if for different users for example, here's uh, here's an average run of of, of uh, right leg movement, and this is um, when they there was there were no line of sight issues, and you can see how the angle goes up, it kind of levels off, and then they slowly start bringing their foot down. This is pretty nice actually; it shows a really good representation of the angle. But uh, uh, but other times, and it was roughly 50-50 we would get something that looked like this where the angle measurement was off because the joints were jittering they were not it was not a nice steady fluid movement even though this was the same user uh, with the same exercise so yeah the data is horrible data actually um, here is a video and it's a, actually a bad video but uh, uh, this is one of the test runs we were doing uh, with the arm uh, I, like I said, I really want. And if you're if you're wondering about the, you can just see if you watch the the, video, the screen actually centered. So I had it programmed to center the user in in, in the camera, so the planes would be centered, um, somewhat. And I actually had the floor marked where we were in, trying to be the same spot every time we recorded. Um, so if you but if you look at the dummy, that that's from another project another student was working on uh, or another. Uh, another employee actually we were all we were all researchers um, was using the dummy to do fall detection she was programming um, the Android an Android device to show fall detection and uh, was doing a pretty good job but one of my I used to help test and I'd have to lift this 180 pound dummy up with somebody else helping me of course uh, I did get exercise in if you're wondering for the summer but uh, 
so yeah, so this is kind of what it would capture. Now there's other things that are on the screen, and I'll, I'm going to upload a video, another video later of uh, the actual program itself. But this is kind of what I was able to record from it as the program is running. And so this, but the problem is this records from the beginning of the program, and I figured out how to do this the very last week of development. I finally got this to work. But I would like future implementations to just record the exercise that it, that you're recording instead of just from the beginning when you actually open up the program. But I was able to get the video size for, for for our program. The video size was 640 by 480. Um, it could go bigger. It probably pixelated, but you could program it to do the entire screen if you like. Um, the data rate was 400 uh, kilobytes per second, as, as the total bit rate was as well. And I was able to get 25 frames a second, which is pretty nice. Um, so I was, I was pretty happy about that. Um, but when I wrote a lot of this code into its a separate class, um, for some reason it slowed down the frame rate to 12 frames a second. So I ended up putting a lot of this nasty stuff in the main for now. In conclusion, um, I, I found you know that the system does very well for upper skeleton joints, uh, all the upper 10 joints. Um, you have 10 upper and you have 10 lower. And it does very well for that, especially when you're sitting down. It does really well with that. Um, but the lower joints when sitting down are just not consistently tracked well. Um, I, first, first of all, I was thinking this would be mainly due to hardware limitations, um, especially if you're using one connect. And we would want to use just one connect to keep the cost down. But uh, also because of the line of sight issue. Now, these we need future research because, you know, if, there may be a way to programmatically uh, fix these problems. It's just it, within my seven weeks, I, I wasn't able to to fix it. Um, but it could be to you know these other problems as well, uh, through the hardware problems. Uh, in in our instance, we couldn't perform the exercises that, like the United Scale requires because of the, you know a lot a lot of that had to do because of the depth of field issue, and some of it had to do with line of sight, which may be fixed later. But the depth the the the, the depth field or you know the depth camera. Its data was um, was limited in that you had to have depth behind you, so laying down was pretty much out of the option. Also, found that the, the AVI footage could be a great tool uh, when, when the data is insufficient, since these exercises can be subjective. Uh, when the data is insufficient, the doctor or, or, or the health professional will have something to look at uh, when they want to get a further uh, look at the exercise for themselves. And this AVI footage can be used by the health professionals to to score on a numerical value based on what they're seeing. So for future work, you know, and if you can e if you email me back and you can and you tell me what movies these objects are from without cheating and looking in a book or using Google search, uh you get like a thousand geek points in my book. Just email me and I'll keep a ledger. Uh, <laughs> but these are some of my favorite movies by the way. Um but you know for future work, you know, I really me, me being a game um Design and development uh, major at my school at Southern Polytech. Uh, you know, I really want. I, I do believe in making games for health, and I do believe in making them engaging, and I do believe in making them uh, not only engaging but could possibly be fun as well. And you kind of trick them into their exercising, even though they don't really. They think they're exercising, but then they get immersed into this kind of game where they still do the same thing. When I originally wrote this uh, PowerPoint, I said they could, you know, just off the top of my head, they could earn rewards for doing exercises correctly. They spend these rewards for bonus material. Uh, after uh, going to a conference this past weekend, I really I heard a talk on uh, gamification and how you know we should be striving to to make it more engaging than just you know earning points or badges. So, and, and I agree. So I would love to rework this and 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 find an engaging way to do this and and, and to make it a fun game to do the therapy with. But you know, for further research is required for that. It's also required for the leg exercises and, not, and arm exercises. But if we keep the arm exercises to the right or left of the body, then maybe not as much. But leg exercises for sure. Uh, we need further research uh, to make this a better, uh, a better part of the program. And further research is required for the storage and retrieval of data, since we didn't have enough time to actually hit that. But you know, how can we we send this data securely? What would be the best way? And how can we store this? And what's the best way to do that? And and have the doctors retrieve it? What kind of system could we implement or set up for that? 
and um, you know not only for stroke therapy but you know for future research we could extend this in the other areas of physical therapy not just based on NIH scale but based on proven methods and exercises that health professionals get you to do for physical therapy this would be a tremendous help uh, in our to um, to our health community I believe so thanks for watching that's all that's all folks and uh, uh, if you go back to begin the beginning of the slide, you can see my contact information. Uh, again, that's um, joshskelton30 at gmail.com and jskelto2 at sbsu.edu. And you can also go to Google. If you go to Google and search Joshua L. Skelton, uh, you should be able to find my Google site. Um, but this information is also on my beginning slide. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, you can go back to my website and you can see other information about this research, as well as other projects I'm working on. Thank you.